only metaphorically in terms of uh, uh, the camera position and things like that, but also in terms of your behavior. So we're saying, no, you need to change the way you play. And this is, this is really challenging because games usually succeed by saying once you learn something, you know, it sticks. You stick with this piece of information and it will be, it'll be useful for you throughout the rest of the game and we're going to add more information to that. Whereas we're basically saying, yeah, 50% of what you learn sticks, the other 50%, you don't need to worry about that. You know? So communicating that is, is one of our really large remaining challenges. And some of these videos, these are some early videos we made of uh, uh, different elements. These are three videos about fight. This one's from Creature Games. <laughs> A lot of these were getting a sense of the kinesthetic, you know, if the player was controlling this creature, you know, what is the pacing of an interaction, uh, how elaborate is the strategy, uh, what's the feedback that you're getting? Yeah, we're trying to get a lot of things, even sort of like here, like how do you get back into the game, like just trying to look at the, look at the problem on different levels. Remember because what, one question with that one was, what does it look like when a slug fights a biped creature? Yeah. yeah. How does a slug fight? Was, See, yeah. was an ongoing if you question. If you crawl out of the ooze at the start of the game, how do you know you're fighting and not just sort of slugging? <laughs> this is a prototype from the tribal game, kind of showing how the intelligence of the creatures might watch. advance, and now they fight differently than they did in the creature game. We also had a challenge uh, uh, in that we wanted to make sure that people knew that this game had, had violence, unlike every other Maxis game we've ever done. There was um, a phase that Ocean went through where every <laughs> single fight scene had, you know, Sam Peckinpah levels of blood spurting out, and we had to kind of dull Ocean back a bit. You said Kill Bill Volume 2, yeah, as I recall. Bill. <laughs> yeah, Kill Bill was our aesthetic for a while. It seemed, to, it seemed to have some people that like this like repressed Maxis sort of like you know, repressed violence. You know all these games about wholesome stuff? <laughs> Kissing and hugging. Day after yeah. day. That's time to kill things, you see. Which is kind of a big open question for us is like how much did we want this to appeal to like hardcore gamers versus Sims players? <laughs> and we had a lot of discussions on the team, you know, aesthetically and around the violence issue. This, yeah. this, this fits the bit right here. That disturbs people. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be the token girl, but I was like... Too much, <laughs> too, too yeah. far. I think yeah. the only reason we didn't do it though was it was technically impossible. <laughs> it would be awesome, you know what I mean? Like if you could eat your creature and actually pull the limbs off and that's how you knew there was less food there. <laughs> yeah, so we, we sort of dialed that yeah. back. But bit. you can see also there's, there's two layers to the, uh, the communication that need to be unified for it to feel like a, a, a single whole as a game and not a sequence of you know, individual games. And you're looking at a sequence of behaviors of, of combat, basically, of taking over cities or, you know, like conquering animals and all that sort of stuff and trying to actually make them feel like part of the same game is... is and on the flip side, as we went to the Civ, we started exploring, you know, the other side, you know, how kind of humorous and cartoony did we want to get. This is an interaction between kind of a, a less aggressive culture and a more aggressive culture. <laughs> you know, how would we convey this? What would the reaction space be? <laughs> I like how they drive a bus. <laughs> this one's got the poker wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a different culture, kind of attempting the same interaction. You know, a lot of this came down to, you know, where was the camera going to be? What's the level of feedback? <laughs> I like to think that this is foreshadowing the worship game in space. It's yeah, in fact, a lot of the meta games you play at the lower levels, we wanted to basically continue on to the higher levels. Yeah. So this is basically kind of what our religious game is basically going down this path and going and religiously recruiting other members that stay in the cities. So basically, I think we're way over time here, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But uh, I want to give you some sense of what it is like to explore a huge design space with a qualified team at all these different levels at once. But yet, at the end of the day, you have to pull it all together. You have to unify this process. You have to kind of make it a singular experience for the player, understandable. And you have to keep in mind that this is, you know, basically, uh, it's got to be something the player wants to do and is easy to do. It's not work. They don't have to use this like a word processor. Aim of Civ as well. This is their disposable time that they're spending on this experience. And there is a trend now toward games being less complicated, you know, not these 40 or 50 hour investments. But something I could sit and, you know, spend 20, 30 minutes playing, you know, understand how to play within five minutes to get into. Uh, which is really almost at odds with the idea of this giant epic thing. But I think that there is a balance you can achieve, but it just involves a lot of exploration. And I want to thank my design team for showing up here today and flying in. And thank everybody here for attending.